Hmm. Let's close up. Good morning. So today we're going to be talking about Simon 9, numbers 4, 5, and 6, comparing functions, rates. That's their slope. Change y over change in x, etc. So we're going to get the timer going, give people a few more minutes to log in, and then we will get started looking at graphs, equations, and tables. Morning, guys. Hey, Courtney. Same little intro. I'm talking about what we're doing today, which is comparing functions rates. That's uh and on queries, I believe, SpongeBob to be. Let me put that on screen what we're doing so everyone knows. Okay, so if you're like me and you still need to make your bed, go ahead and do that now. We'll give everyone else a few more minutes to join us, and then we will get started. Paper and pencil at the ready. Um, fortunately, with a lot of this stuff, it doesn't really require a whole lot of scrap work, but I am requiring that everyone attach a picture of their scrap work this week for credit. Okay, be right back. All right, the bed is made. Hey, it's the Luger. Dun dun dun.
That noise is quite annoying. I uh, hear that. All right, well, we are going to get rolling here. Just fixing the gray book for somebody who actually did their work last week. All done. Okay. So, guys, here's what we're talking about we're looking at functions and rates, and we're going to be comparing their slopes, trying to determine which one has the greater rate of change. If they were to give you a picture, of the graphs, it'd be super duper simple. For instance, if you were given a y-axis and an x-axis, and they just drew you some lines, And I said, if I, I'd have to label these one second. So this would be A and this would be B. All right, so if we were looking at these two lines that are on screen right now, and I were to ask you which one has the greater slope, I'm hoping everyone would say, well, A has the greater slope because it's steeper, it's going up faster. Move that to green. A would have the greater slope because its its rate of change, its y is growing faster. Its rather, its change of y over x is growing faster than B's change of y over x. Um, so if it's a picture, it's super easy because you can just say, well, this one's going up faster. Um, in the inverse, if the lines were negative, uh, meaning they were going down, like, I said there's one going in a negative direction and let's make a so these two lines okay so these two lines a and b which one has the greater slope well in this case it just means the one that is which one is less negative That'd be B. So in this case, B would be the greater slope because it has less of a negative rate. But anyway, what I'm saying here is if it's a picture, it's super simple to derive this in knowledge, but you were not given pictures always. And that's where we're gonna start, calculating slopes with graphs. And then we'll do equations, which is probably the easiest, and then we'll do tables, which is probably the hardest of all of it. So let's get cracking. At the end, we'll get to questions for assignment nine and uh, I'll help you guys with anything you want to know. Give me one second, I got to grab a file. Okay, so let's talk about the slope of this guy. A little screen capture. Here he is, come on, drag over. There we go. That's not what I wanted. I wanted this thing. There it is. That's what I wanted. Okay. 
so question here. All right, so finding the slope. That's what we're trying to do. This is not one of your questions for your assignment. This is just a practice problem. Okay, so what we want is the change in y, and by all means, chat, chime in with, if you think you know what the answer is. We want the change in y over the change in x. That is otherwise known as the rise over the run. So what we want to do is look at this graph. Now they've already highlighted two spots. There's one here and one here where this line, this blue function actually intersects with perfect coordinates. Coordinates are where the, the Y lines, the X lines crisscross each other. I know you might be able to argue. There's another one right here. But what we want to do is actually measure how much this is going up and over. So what we do is, first we note, we notice as, we notice as we look at this graph going left to right that it is going up. So we're gonna count up and over, up and over like this. So with our careful counting fingers, looking at the screen, it goes up by one square, two square, three square, four units. And then it goes over by one. So what it's doing is it's going up four units and it's going over one unit. So the slope, which is always denoted by M in equations, goes in the equation Y equals MX plus B. M is the slope. So M equals four over one, which means the slope of this function is one out the four. If I get rid of that any sloppier. Yeah, so the slope of this one is four, okay? So let's try another one. And hopefully someone in chat will chime in and beat me to it. Okay, let me capture a screenshot real quick and you guys tell me what you think the slope of this guy is. Now, I'm gonna help you out a little bit just in case it's hard to see where this uh, function crisscrosses. So it looks like we have a connection here here, here, and it looks like we could, right there, okay. So chat, chime away. What do you think the slope of this function is? Okay, I've got one answer. I'm gonna do this like a number talk. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, write some answers on screen. Not telling you whether it's right or wrong. Hang on. <laughs> Oh, 
Is there only one person awake today? So I've had the slope equals three, the slope equals negative three over two. Last chance, anyone want to chime in? Okay. Well, if I look very carefully, which I try to do, I go down and over, down, and over, down, and over. The key word here is that I'm going down. And if I'm going down, that means that this has to be a negative slope. So it's down one, down two. So it's going down three, and then over two. And down three and over two, down three and over two, down three over two. So, okay, so if it's going down three, and then it's always going to move into the right over two, that means the slope is negative three over two. So I would have to agree with this one. The slope would be negative three halves. Down three and over two, down three and over two. Now, if you had happened, which is a teachable moment here, if you had happened to say, well, I'm gonna go from here all the way down and all the way over, something like that, you said, well, I'd go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's down nine over one, two, three, four, five, six and over six, down nine, and over six. You'll notice that these are the exact same fraction. One is simplified and one is not. So technically speaking, they would both be correct. But you just always want to simplify. Yeah, those are the same, okay? So if you're given a picture of a graph, you need to count its change in Y, which might be up or down, and then its change of X, which is always gonna be over. We're gonna do one more, and then we're gonna move into locating the uh, rate from a, an equation. All right, guys, give me your answers, give me your answers. What do you think about this one? I'll help you out with a couple of dots. So this guy looks like it goes through here, here, I'll just keep marking them. Okay, so change Y over change X. Let's get your answers, chat. Let's go. <laughs> Excuse me. Anybody else? Well, there's more than just two people in chat today.
I appreciate these gentlemen providing us some uh, things to think about. But come on, there's more than just two people here. So if we're going from these dots to dots, we've got to go up one and over two, up one and over two, up one and over two, up one and over two. So if we're talking about the change in Y and the change in X, it's going up by one and it's going over by two. So the slope is one half. And you gotta make sure that those numbers are in the right spots. So yeah, being able to count it is important, but knowing where those numbers go in the fraction is absolutely vital. Up and down number that change your y is always supposed to be in the numerator, and then the change in x, the sideways number, is always supposed to be in the denominator. All right, so everyone cool on that? We're going to come back to those probably in our questions, so keep that in mind. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about what is probably the easiest of the easy when they just flat out just give you the equation. As I fail to get a zoomed in screenshot. All right, here we go. Let me get a capture. Da -da -da. All right, what about this guy? All right, so here is an equation, and I'm just asking you, what is the slope? All you truly have to remember is the slope in a subform equation of y equals mx plus b. Okay, so if you'll remember, the slope is right here. So my question to you is, what is M in this equation? Chat, sound off. Okay, well, it would appear that Tate and uh, the Inquirer is going to carry everybody here. Um, well, one of these is correct. One of them is close. Okay, so if you look at the equation for slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. The x is already, is already its own thing, so the slope is just the 9. It's just the coefficient. It's just the number that's attached to the X. So the answer would be just the nine. So the slope is nine in this case. If you were to try to visualize that, which I think you should try to do, especially when you're you know, being asked to compare these things to other uh, 
to other pictures or graphs or whatever. This line would be going up nine and then over one and then be going up nine again and then over one. So this is a very, very steep, 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 steep line. So it's going up nine over one, up nine over one and so on. Okay. Let's try a different one. And this, like I said, this is probably the easiest because there's not as much scrap work, if any scrap work for some of these. You just have to know what you're looking at. Screenshot. What this one? And just remember, the equation is that y equals mx plus b. Go on, try to answer the, uh, the slope is eight thirds. Very yawny today. We've got some unagree to that. That's the same thing. And you gentlemen are both correct. Yes, that the slope is in fact eight thirds. And I'm gonna take a moment here to talk about typing. So if your answer is eight thirds, but you have to answer on a Google doc, you know, like you do, the way you type that everybody is you type eight, we didn't paint. You type eight front slash three. This is how you type a fraction. You use the front slash key. No commas, no parentheses, just use a front slash. Okay? So that's the slope for this one, eight thirds. So we we're being asked to compare two things and said, hey, which one has the greater rate of change? Which, has, which one has the greater slope? There it is, right there. Okay, so now let's move to the one that actually requires the most technical uh, care for your work. I think that means I'm gonna bring up my math practice standards. Let me just keep those on screen. Okay, so now let's see, slope from tables, yep. All right, so here we go. All right, so finding the slope. So for these, so what we're gonna remember at the slope is the change in Y over the change in X, which is usually found by doing Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So the only thing you really have to do that is sort of inventive for yourself is look at the X column and the Y column and you have to choose. You have to choose which quarter pairs you want to use because it does not truly matter. And I'll do this one twice just to prove to you that it doesn't matter. 
Now I'm a sucker for small numbers that are positive if I can pull it off. So my natural instinct would be to choose this as x1 the beginning and this is x2 the ending and this is uh, y1 at the beginning and this is y2. Oh, you guys are faster than I am today. Hang on. So I've already got people saying that the slope is five. I haven't worked it out yet. So let's let's see if I can prove you right or wrong. So I'm gonna try to make an argument by being very precise with my math. And uh, I've already I like I like to think of this formula as a tool, to be honest. Okay, so let's see. So that for me, that would be. 26 minus 16 over 6 minus 4. 26 minus 16 is 10. 6 minus 4 is 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So yeah, I think I would agree with that. So, so far I've got 5. Now let's just say that you're not like me. You don't like small numbers. You don't like positive numbers. You just for whatever reason, decided, you know what? I'm just going to take the first two coordinates. I'm going to make this x. I'm sorry, this is y. I'll make this my y1 and this my y2. I'm going to make this one my x1 beginning and this my x2 ending. So that would be negative uh, 14 minus negative 39. all over negative two minus negative seven. So the theory goes that if this works every time that this will also come out to be five. So let's just see about that. Okay, well, when you're subtracting a negative number, you can make them into addition. Uh, negative 14 plus 39. So it's gonna be a positive value because 39 is so much a uh, greater than 14. So this is really the same as 39 minus 14. And 39 minus 14, well 39 minus 10 would be 29. And 29 minus five would be 25. So this would be 25 over. The opposite of subtraction is addition. Negative two plus seven would be five. And 25 divided by five is five. So yeah, it would not matter which two x, y coordinates I chose, as long as I put them into the formula correctly, I would come out with my slope. So let's do another one of those and everyone from chat can try to chime in with what they think is the correct answer. And if you've got a question, please post. So get a different one. All right, let's look at this table. So we're trying to find the slope. We know that the slope is found by getting a change in Y or the change in X. However, you have to be a creative little math student here and you actually have to be the one that picks which coordinates you use. No one's gonna tell you which ones to use. You have to be the one that picks them. Now, if you're on YouTube watching this later, why don't you pause now, try to get the answer, and then unpause and see if we get the same thing. Now, okay, so I've already got chat answers coming in. All right, so I've got that as a possible answer. 
Let's see. Um, I'm a sucker for positive numbers, but you know what? Every single one of these has a negative number. I'm also a sucker for uh, small values. So I think what I'm going to do is make this my Y1 and this my Y2. This is going to be my X1 and this is going to be my X2. Which means if I'm using the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, that would be negative 1, because that's my y2, minus a positive 2, all over 1 minus. Now, x1 is a negative value, so I have to nest that in parentheses. So y2 is negative 1 minus y1, which is 2. x2 is 1 minus the x1, which is a negative 2. Okay, so what would that be? Well, negative 1 minus 2 is going to be negative 3. 1 minus negative 2. Now, the opposite subtraction is addition, so these become plus signs. 1 plus 2 is 3. So negative 3 divided by 3 Let me scoot these for a second. Yeah, that's equal to negative 1. Negative divided by a positive is a negative answer. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So I would, I would agree with that one. Interesting. Reading chat. Put that into a calculator and I got 0. You might want to, I think you might have hit a key that you thought was the division key, but it was not. I'm pretty sure if you if you put this exact thing into a calculator, it's going to say negative 3, and then you'd have to use a division key, which I'm not really sure how to type that. Here, try, try again. Anyone, that, anyone in chat that has a calculator, type this in. Uh, the mystery is someone in chat typed this in and they got zero. Which it should not have done. So. Oh, it's negative one. I just used the calculator. Yeah, I know it is. I'm, I'm sure it's supposed to be coming out to negative one. Thank you for chiming in. That is totally right. We're, I'm trying to decipher what key actually hit. Well, see if you can solve the mystery, chat. See, let's see if we can figure out the with the calculator that's on your Chromebooks, what key we might have hit. I mean, it's. I think my first instinctual guess just is that if you did negative three and then you accidentally hit the plus button, that would equal zero. Okay, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, okay. So there's the mystery solved because negative three plus three is zero. So, okay, just care for what buttons we're pressing. Okay, so let's talk about assignment nine questions uh, four, five, and six. I'm gonna put it on screen so everyone knows this is what we're doing. Da, 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 da. This has been a pretty good session. Lots of uh, interaction on chat and on comms.
All right, so I can just grab the folder. So many overlapping frames. Okay, so here we go. Okay, there's one. So I'm, I'm gonna have to do this on multiple screens to try and get you guys a good look at them. So what we've got here, hang on. I wanna leave room for some directions on how to answer it just to make sure everyone gets there. You know what, whatever, I'm using the whole screen. Okay, so this is assignment nine and this is question number four. I'm gonna put a, a couple of dots on this graph to make sure everyone can see its coordinates and where they crisscross. Now, if you're here live today, it's, it's not easy to remember, oh, what did he say? I remember him doing problems like this without having to wait I'm reading chat. Um, but if you want to hold off on answering until you have a chance to go back and watch the replay on YouTube, by all means, hold off on answering and wait until you can see the replay on YouTube. It takes the whole process to get this up on YouTube after we're done takes about 10 minutes. I have to render the video on my computer first and then I have to upload it to my channel. Both take just a few. Uh, chat's asking if some of the answers this week have decimals. I, part of me feels like I shouldn't say. Part of me feels like I think I'm robbing you. Like part of our math practice standards is that you have to be precise and you have to pr make an argument. And I think that part of the, a healthy progression is to be able to argue with yourself whether you think the answer should have a decimal or not. But I will say I tend to try and let them come out whole numbers if at all possible. So what are we expected to do? I'm gonna pull up the, I'm gonna pull up the answer document to make sure I'm not misremembering anything. Yeah, this is awesome guys. This is the most people I've had for the live session in quite a while. Just pulling up the answer document to make sure I remember exactly how it's worded. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we go. So the, what it says on your end, and this is gonna be cluttered for room. It says slope of function A, slope of function B, and I'm gonna paraphrase this last part because the screen isn't long enough right now, and then it wants the greatest slope. Okay, so for those of you here in chat, let me explain what I'm asking you to do. and everyone on YouTube, please hear my words. Okay, so function A, they've gone ahead and told you, here it is. 
So function A in this particular problem is the line. So you're gonna give me that answer right here. It might be a fraction, it might be a whole number, it might, might, might be positive, might be negative, but whatever the slope of that line is, you put it here. That's the change in Y over the change in X, the rise over the run. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can go back and watch us do the practice problems and see exactly how to do that. Now, function B, they gave us a table. And its answer goes down here. So for this one, you have to pick two coordinates and do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and get that slope. And it might be a fraction, it might be positive, it might be negative, I don't know. And put it, on, put it next to where this pink line is. Now the greatest slope section part of this let me bump that down just a smidge. Okay, so now everyone should understand that the answer for the third part, the greatest slope, which is really the standard, the standard eighth graders are asked to do is comparing two functions. So the, the greatest slope part, this is really, to me, the most important, the green part. Your answer is going to be one of two things. It's either going to be function A or it's going to be function B. Not both. All I need you to do is figure out which one is bigger. So when you answer the, the, the purple part and you answer the pink part, whichever one is the bigger number is your answer. And I talked about this at the very beginning with regards to negative values. The lesser negative value which would be closer to the origin would be the greater slope, but I'm not really sure to run into two negatives facing off against each other. But the way I did this, let's say you goofed up which one was the greatest slope. At least you should, you'll be able to get credit for giving me the slope of function A and the slope of function B. So this is question four, where there's a line I need to slope for and a table I need to slope for. But we need to go ahead and move on to question five because they, everyone has to redo all this all over again. So if you're here live on chat and you didn't have your answer ready and you have to wait for it to come out on YouTube, I'm so sorry that you have to, to do that, but we got to move on. So let me grab. The next one. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. So this is it, where do I put you? So this is question five. So what you wanna do is carefully, carefully, carefully look at function A. That's not the color I wanted. Come on, here we go. So here's function A and here's function B. And the direction said
I'm going to paraphrase here too for the sake of space. You need the slope of A, you need the slope of B, and then you're trying to find the greatest slope. All right, man. Thank you. I really appreciate you being here live for the time you could. It'll be on YouTube shortly. I appreciate you. Thanks. Okay, so. When you, count, when you figure out what the slope of A is, you put it here in the purple line. When you figure out what the slope of B is, you put it here on the pink line. And then your answer for the greatest slope will either be A or B. Not both. I'm going to try and rewrite that. Okay, A. It'll either, it'll either be A or B. So once you've completed the purple and the pink part, then you just need to say, hey, guess which one's bigger? That one. For people that are here live, I'm give them another second to see if they can figure it out before I have to clip on and put number six on screen. Let me check my email. I haven't even chat that are asking me to see if they got it right. I haven't even figured it out yet. But for that one person that just responded, yeah, that's it. Yeah, the one that's the function where they just give you the equation, you just get to spot it. Kind of sweet. Those of you waiting with bated breath for the next problem to come on screen, I'm going to make a public service announcement. Um, you guys, everyone that hears my voice, you have got to go check Ms. Elliot's classroom today for some really important information. Uh, one of the, I think there was a couple of things that were going to be posted, but the most important has to do with Ah. Anyway, the most important thing has to do with uh, food, actually. So the school has been doing pickup meals on campus, and that program is going to be changing to like a home delivery system of some kind, um, where they'll bring the food to your house, but there's a catch. You have to go sign up for it online by this Saturday. Like there is no time to waste because the pickup meals at the campus is not going to be happening. I don't think if I understand it right anymore. In fact, like this week might be the last for that for pickup and go. Uh, you're going to actually have to sign up. So they'll just bring you the food. So go to look. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be emailing that stuff out, but I think something was also going to be posted on Miss Elliot's classroom. So please, if you hear my voice, go check that. We'll check later today. I apologize. There's a phone call that I have to take. One. Oh, well, I guess not. Before that person calls back, let's see if I can get this other question on the screen.
All right, so this one is going to be question six. It might be, it might get posted later today. And if not, I'm going to be emailing my homeroom the documents anyway. All right, so. So this is, this is assignment nine, question number six. All right, same directions. I'm just gonna have to mute myself and check this phone call real quick while you guys work on that on stream. Sorry about that. High quality live streaming for sure. So chat, any questions about assignment nine, questions four, five, and six? Someone said five and six is the same thing. Did I mess up and click the wrong one? Hang on one second. That Now what you're saying might actually be true. And I'm fine with that. Yeah, no, I'm, if, if, uh, if you think that that's wonky and you want to retry them, go ahead. Let me see. As long as they are different images, IDC. Okay. 
Uh, I don't want to change the screen for the sake of confusing anyone, but I guess that might be a possibility. Okay. Well, that's going to do it for today then. All right, thanks. I appreciate you checking that tape. All right, well, that's going to do it for today's stream. That concludes uh, assignment nine. Again, look for emails and announcements um, from me and Amos Elliott's classroom about food stuff and other upcoming whatevers. Uh, take care of yourselves, take care of your families, make your beds, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.